Hello, this is Mitch and Alex here. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about some uh, sacred geometry and uh, different shapes and ideas. Uh, I found that the more that I've looked into sacred geometry, the more open I've been to different spiritual concepts. Um, which is funny because I never actually enjoyed mathematics in high school uh, or, or the college level for that matter. Uh, however, the more I've gotten into sacred geometry, the more I've come to uh, have a growing passion or love, if you will, for shapes and what they mean <coughs> in a dimensional sense uh, to who I am and, and how I relate to the universe. Well, Mitch, that's a good story, but um, uh, there's a <laughs> astrological um, change on the horizon, and the Illuminati has caught on to what you're doing. Oh yeah, I recently put in my resume with the Illuminati. Uh, I feel that uh, I've tapped into some forbidden uh, knowledge, if you will, forbidden histories, and uh, basically just forbidden information that, uh, I mean, instead of getting killed over it, I might as well, you know, it can't beat and join them kind of thing, you know? Well, well, basically, Mitch, I mean, there's an astrological change on the horizon, and which means that people, they're not going to be looking towards the same old symbols that they used to. These these old pictures of pyramids and symbols of crosses and yin yangs and whatnot. I mean, people are, are going to get sick and tired of it. They're getting sick and tired of it already. Now we've looked at some of your work, and we we do feel that you know possibly some of these symbols could be useful for the future of our projects. Now, there are certain countries that we haven't got into. We're looking at some small African countries, and we're looking to tap into some mines in India and take out their iron ore and whatnot. Um, the U.S. is running low on steel, and plus we want to conduct a few more wars. However, even though we want to do that, Mitch, we still want to project the idea that we're running along the lines of peace and harmony. And we want to undertake some people in our religion. I mean, it's all about religion. We want we want the people to link that to us somehow. Now we think we, you have just the right touch. I like some of the your use of color in this one right here. Ah, yeah. Use the yin yang in this one. But we were discussing one earlier. Where is it? Where where are we going through right here? Ah, oh, yeah. <clears throat> now, this is a simple project that you're starting with. Now, we see a large amount of potential in this project. Where it will go, Mitch? That's up to you. It just depends on how bad you want to be a team leader in this project of ours. Well, I do believe in the destruction of the Earth, Alex, and uh, ultimately the lizard race taking over. I've been a huge fan of lizards since I was very small. I used to capture them and make friends with them and then decapitate them, uh, which I felt was always necessary. Um, sometimes I'd like to take garter snakes and throw them in front of uh, riding lawnmowers just to, just to watch them get shredded. However, I find that the larger reptilian uh, beings can be rather pleasant. And I try to spend as much time as I can hanging out with lizard people. Um, I was always a fan of the Ninja Turtles. And I'd like to put that out there again. I was always a fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, well, that's good. Actually, uh, Master, uh, Master Splinter is actually a good friend of ours. He's actually good friends with uh, Master Shredder. Who, you know, he's tried to take over the Earth a few times. Ah, yes, yes. I, you know, I've, it's been my, uh, my dream to meet Master Shredder uh, one of these days and uh, ask him where he got his cool helmet made. I always thought that was pretty neat. Um, I mean, where do you get these suits manufactured? When you're going to take over the world, you have to have some amazing suit, you know? And it's like, who makes these things? Well, uh, usually um, each of our members, they form their own costume. And usually they, they think of their own idea. We let them do it after they go through the ritual of removing a man's hips with a ceiling fan. Huh. And uh, where did the vast fortune come from that uh, built the giant drill? that Krang uh, was driving. Remember Krang, the, the guy with the, the brain in his belly? 
that uh, he was teammates with Master Shredder, and, and they had this giant drill that they would just drill around the earth in. And uh, I always wondered, you know, like, where did they get the funding for that? I mean, was that part of some uh, some oil project? I mean, are these guys connected with, like, Halliburton and the, and, and the like? Well, slightly, but it was more from that AIG thing that happened. Oh. It's been going on for years and years, and insuring people and... You know, that whole bank scam. Actually, when the U.S. citizens paid taxes to them, they actually were paying for that project. Huh. They were paying taxes so that, you know, everyone would be insured in their homes and the banks would stay up and whatnot. But really, the money was just going to that drone project right there. Huh. Bank of America. I mean, that's really what the whole project was about. Right. Right. Well, I don't bank with them. <laughs> Uh, yes. Well, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I but, but anyways, I think this could be an interesting symbol for a new corporation, Mitch. I, th I think the people will really buy it, and it'll be something that they can trust. Well, I, I agree with you, Alex. And they, they let me show you, let's show the audience they, here why. It's not a, you see, it's it's kind of a confusing issue. Uh, confusing. Exactly. That's you know, what we like about. And it. what's great about this symbol is that we're not sure if there's like circular stuff going on here. Or if we got we've got some cubes being involved, but then right when your eyes think that they're adjusting on the cube, then you start seeing the straight lines, and you, you see the, all these uh, these points around the outside, which are uh, quite pleasant to the eyes. But the, there actually aren't any points on the, in this whole drawing. If, if you look at it, everything's either squared or rounded. But your eyes and your mind seems to think that there's points involved, but those are really just cross sections of squares, Alex. Um, it's uh, it's really a, a crazy mathematical geometrical phenomenon, and and it, it's enough that if your company has this kind of logo, people won't even pay attention to what your company is doing. They're just trying to figure out the fucking logo. You, you know, I like it because I don't really understand what the hell you just said there, but you under you say it like you understand it, oh, I understand. and that's what really matters. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter if it makes sense to other people. In fact, it's kind of good that they think you understand it, but then they don't really understand it. They just trust that I understand it, or someone understands it, and they just uh, go along with whatever I say. Exactly. That way they look back to you like you're some, you know, higher-up official or something, yeah. or some, some type of priest, or you're, you're some kind of demigod, a half-man, half-spirit being. Oh, indeed, indeed. And sometimes I wonder if I, if I might be. I've been known to, uh, to jump really high from time to time. Well, we we, it, we 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 like that about you. I mean, hell, Ronald Reagan, he thought he was the incarnation of Ramses. I mean, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I mean, this is the guy that built and the giant library. He really believed it. And I he mean, used to be an actor. Sucked at basketball, though. I, I mean, I really feel that I'm the reincarnation of of Blackbeard the pirate. I mean, one of my favorite pirates. One of my favorites uh, as well. I like to think that I'm perhaps uh, Marco Polo. Reincarnated. You know, Marco Polo, Alex, is a very interesting uh, figure in history. Um, did you know that he was not only friends with Genghis Khan, but also with the Pope at the time? Quite yeah, yes, I have heard that before, many yeah. times, many times. Yeah, it's amazing. The guy traveled all over the place, had high status no matter where he went. He even banged this chick in India during the time of the plague and somehow avoided the plague. I, I mean, that's a fucking hero for you, you know what I mean? I mean, Clinton, yeah, he banged one of his, what, his interns? Big fucking deal. Marco Polo was banging chicks all over the fucking place. He had a Mongolian wife. He had an Indian girlfriend. And, hell, the guy knew the Pope. What else could you really ask for? Mitch, this is going to help us, this symbol right here. It's going to help us. I mean, we're going to put this symbol on surfboards, we're going to put it, we're going to put it on jets, I mean, it's going to be around a lot of like 12, 13, 14 year old people's <laughs> visual <laughs> media, is what we're looking at, that's what we're looking to do, we flash this symbol in front of them, and we call it uh, counterculture or something like that, or yeah, the, the rebellion. But really, it's just a big money making. Scheme. Yeah, really, it's just a little big sketch that I made the other night. That was kind of fun to do. There's not really much behind it, but it's cool shapes. I like the shapes. Uh, shapes are nice.
the meaning that we find in these little things is always interesting to me. Ah, hang on, I've got to take this. It uh, sounds like a very important text. I don't know how I can tell that by the ringer. That sleazy bitch. Anyway, uh, back to what we were talking about, though, Alex. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about, uh, you know, uh, how you just paint, you know, drew this up the other night and had all these complex shapes in there. But the important thing is, is like, you got to think of a whole like religion behind this symbol. Like, what was the being that you were you were thinking of or doing meditation with? To be honest, uh, I was really meditating a lot on uh, the, to some mythological and some the very real figure um, figurehead in our our uh, culture, Santa Claus, um, and just the immense amount of power that he must have to travel around the globe in one night, and basically to to stop time because. Technically, it can't be Christmas Eve everywhere. So he's got some kind of magical, mystical power. Not to mention he's going up and down people's chimneys. Now, here's the thing, Alex. In the 21st century, we, you know, switched over to gas. A lot of people have gas stoves now. So how he gets into their house is really just kind of a mystery. I mean, I, I've just always had a lot of respect for the, uh, the man Santa Claus and his mighty powers. No, I mean, do you, do you think, like, maybe he was, um, I don't know. You think maybe he's like a ninja of some sort? I think it's very possible that uh, right suit. that Santa Claus could be a ninja. In he's pretty fat, though. I mean, he could have been a sumo wrestler at well, one point, but then he learned ninjutsu. There's, there's fact, Alex, and there's myth is uh, one thing I've learned. And, and to tell you the truth, up until the time that the, uh, uh, towards the night before Christmas poem was written, Santa Claus was always uh, seen as a, as a thin, healthy man who happened to wear a robe. Now, it wasn't until uh, it was the night before Christmas when they mentioned something about his, his belly laughing like a full, bowl full of jelly that we started to get this commercialized idea of Santa Claus being this fat, jolly bastard. But really, all that it was saying was that he, he was laughing so hard his belly shook a little bit. So, I mean, in all reality, the, I, I really don't believe that Santa's fat. Uh, I don't know how he could be if he's getting up and down these fucking chimneys. Not to mention, we, we got to look at overall endurance here, Alex. I mean, the guy is traveling the globe. You you can't right. you can't do that for day for a full day on end uh, without burning some calories. You know what I mean? Now, granted, he could get fat all year, but he's not going to get very much work done. You got to look at his work ethic. A guy with that kind of work ethic, chances are he's in pretty damn good shape. Maybe he just gets like a little bit overweight during like the winter time. Like he he's packing like calories because he lives up in the North Pole. And that's going to be colder than hell up there. He does, but part of me also thinks that Santa's kind of an adventurous type, you know? It's like when it's not time to be preparing for Christmas, he, he's probably down in the Bahamas kicking back with his wife. Uh, she's got to be getting old, you know? So he, he might even be ha having a couple girls on the side. We don't, we don't know what he does, Alex, but... Well, I mean, uh, the, the man can move around pretty fast and sneak around. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I mean, fat guys typically, with the exception of the Beverly Hills Ninja, can't pull that off, or Kung Fu Panda if you will. Right, right, right. You know, Jack Black has been known to be pretty quick for being a fat guy. But um, typically speaking, I mean, the fat guys aren't the sneakiest uh, when it comes to uh, stealth. Right, 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 right. Now, I mean, but, but like, what if all those people that, you know, go around the mall, if they really work for Santa Claus? I think that's he very possible. Like an entire army of, like, people that sneak into people's homes. I feel like he puts out a lot of... Um, uh, look-alikes so that no one can ever track him down. You know, it's just another method. It's kind of like having uh, two or three limos and the president comes into town. You know, it's it kind of like which one is it, which one could he be? You know, I mean, it's very possible Santa's black and we just never knew because we got all these white Santa Claus running around. It's misinformation to keep his identity safe. Yeah, that's true. That's well, true. It could be Chinese. We don't know. We don't know the color of Santa. And that, that's, once again, why I really admire the man. We, we don't know anything about him, really. Where he came from, uh, how he's lived so long. I mean, let's look at the amount of time that Santa's been alive. I mean, easily a good 400, 500 years. And I mean, that, that to me, Alex, is just proof of some kind of mystical, magical uh, heritage. Perhaps the demigod, like we spoke of earlier. Very possible. 
I, I think he could. I mean, you know, I mean, it must have been stressful when he was first starting to do this. I mean, well, I feel like it, it would be getting more and more stressful. I mean, you look at the uh, the population of the world growing so much, and even just the last hundred years. I mean, back in the day, it's like most people died uh, by the age of you know, like 25, 30 years old. Now we're looking at billions of people that this guy has to go visit in one night. Good or bad, because even the bad ones get, get coal in their stocking. I mean, we're talking about, this is a guy who set out to do a job, and gosh darn it, he's going to fucking do it. Yeah, but I really wonder, though. I mean, sometimes there are some unhappy kids at Christmas. I mean, you can't get Christmas presents to all those kids. And how, did it, how does he choose which kids to get to? I think he, uh, he looks for the kids that are pretty much bitches. And uh, he likes to watch them cry. That's how he entertains himself, Alex. Uh, me, personally, Santa always believes me. I, 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 I think it's the parents that are bitches, too. You know what I yeah, mean? the parents, too. You know, Because then the parents have to deal with it. It's like a punishment to the parents. But those are the types of people that we look for in the Illuminati. I mean, you know, the people that will just fall for the whole holiday thing. and it's, They're easy people to trick. If you don't buy this, you know, for your wife or whatever during Christmas, then, you know, you're not a real man or whatever. Yeah, you're not a real man. You're not a real American. Hell, you don't love Jesus. You know, it gets woven in there somehow. Like, you know, it's, uh, it, those are important it's genius, genius techniques. I, I don't know who came up with it. But. You know, sometimes we communicate with Santa um, not too often, but he is a partner. He comes around sometimes, but, uh, you know. Well, I'm uh, getting more and more excited about this project uh, as, we, as we talk, and uh, hopefully we can talk more about it at a later date. Absolutely.